Hi everyone, this is going to be a very interesting video and a very important video because over the last few years we received a few strange comments in the comment section of most of our videos. Some people claimed that Paul was a false apostle, a false teacher. Is it true? Well, if it is true, we have a huge problem. Why? Because Paul wrote most of the New Testament. So that means we can't trust Scripture. So this is a very big issue. It's important for me to address this. Was Paul really a false teacher? A false apostle? Well, as always, with everything, we cannot just trust someone's opinions or their assumptions or perceptions that they make. We have to go to Scripture. The only, <laughs> the only absolute truth we have in this world. God's Word. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. All right. Now, first you need to understand that Paul used to be called Saul as well. He went by two names. He had a Roman name and a Hebrew name. Before he followed Christ, he went by Saul, which is his Hebrew name. And then after he started to follow Jesus Christ and started to share the gospel, he went by his Roman name, Paul. Acts 13 verse 9. But Saul, also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, stared straight at Elimas. Now, if you're a young Christian, you need to understand Paul's story. Before he followed Christ, he was a totally different man. He persecuted the early Christians. He was a, a highly educated Jew. And he thought that the followers of Jesus and Jesus himself, they just shared a false new teaching. It's, it was called the way. And so he persecuted them. He was even there when Stephen was stoned to death. Acts 8 verse 1. Saul agreed with putting him to death. On that day, a severe persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all, except the apostles, were scattered throughout the land of Judea and Samaria. Devout men buried Stephen and mourned deeply over him. Saul, however, was ravaging the church. He would enter house after house, drag off men and women and put them in prison. Saul was a ruthless, legalistic man. He was very dangerous and the early Christians were afraid of him because he hunted them down. That was until Jesus Christ changed him in an instant on the road to Damascus. He accepted Christ as his Lord and he started to share the gospel. And then the tables were turned on him. <laughs> the one day he was persecuting our other Christians and then the other day the Jews were persecuting him now because now he did the same things as the people he persecuted. He started to share the gospel, this new way. And when they wanted to kill him, this was his defense. Listen to this. Acts 22, brothers and fathers, listen now to my defense before you. When they heard that he was addressing them in Aramaic, some translation says Hebrew here, they became even quieter. He continued, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strictness of our ancestral law. I was zealous for God, just as all of you are today. I persecuted this way to the death, arresting and putting both men and women in jail, as both the high priest and the whole council of elders can testify about me. You see, he had a very promising career. After I received letters from them to the brothers, I traveled to Damascus to arrest those who were there and bring them to Jerusalem to be punished. As I was traveling and approaching Damascus, about noon, an intense light from heaven suddenly flashed around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Soul, soul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? He said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, the one you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but they did not hear the voice of the one who was speaking to me. I said, what should I do, Lord? The Lord told me, get up and go into Damascus, and there you will be told everything that you have been assigned to do. Since I couldn't see because of the brightness of the light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me and went into Damascus. Someone named Ananias, a devout man according to the law, 
who had a good reputation with all the Jews living there, came and stood by me and said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And in that very hour, I looked up and saw him. And he said, The God of our ancestors has appointed you to know his will. Listen carefully to this. To see the righteous one and to hear the words from his mouth since you will be a witness for him to all people of what you have seen and heard. And now, why are you delaying? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. After I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him telling me, hurry, get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. But I said, Lord, they know that in synagogue after synagogue, I had those who believe in you imprisoned and beaten. And when the blood of your witness Stephen was being shed, I stood there giving approval and guarding the clothes of those who killed him. He said to me, go, because I will send you far away to the Gentiles. So this is Paul's story. He was passionately persecuting the early Christians, trying to kill them, putting them in jail until Jesus opened his spiritual eyes so that he could see the truth. And then he was converted and he started to share the gospel. He shared the truth about Jesus, that he was indeed the Messiah. And then the Jews wanted to kill him for it. Acts 9 verse 19, And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul was with the disciples in Damascus for some time. Immediately he began proclaiming Jesus in the synagogues. He is the Son of God. All who heard him were astounded and said, Isn't this the man in Jerusalem who was causing havoc for those who called on this name and came here for the purpose of taking them as prisoners to the chief priests? But Saul grew stronger and kept confounding the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. After many days had passed, the Jews conspired to kill him. But Saul learned of their plot. So they were watching the gates day and night, intending to kill him. But his disciples took him by night and lowered him in a large basket through an opening in the wall. Imagine this. Imagine you are Paul. Just put yourself in his shoes for just a minute. He had a promising future. He was a well-educated Jew. And the people around him, they respected him. I mean, he was educated by Gamaliel. And he's so religious. He knows God's law. And then he threw it all away for Jesus, the Messiah. And then they wanted to kill him. But he didn't care because now he knows the truth. So now he wants to share this truth to other people. But he also wanted to connect with the disciples. But they were afraid of him because they remember, whoa, 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 Paul, Saul, he used to persecute us. Listen to this, Acts 9 verse 26. When he arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him since they did not believe he was a disciple. Now, some people who say that Paul was a false teacher, they say, well, he wasn't really a disciple. He wasn't one of them. See, look at this verse. Even the disciples, they said no, or they didn't believe that he was really a disciple. Well, all you got to do is just read a little bit further. Verse 27, Barnabas, however, took him and brought him to the apostles and explained to them how Saul had seen the Lord on the road and that the Lord had talked to him and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. Now, listen carefully to the next verse, verse 28. Saul was coming and going with them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. So you see, they accepted Paul as one of them. He shared the gospel boldly with them. And then later, Peter wrote this about Paul. 2 Peter 3 verse 15. Also, regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our dear brother Paul has written to you according to the wisdom given to him. He speaks about these things in all his letters. There are some things hard to understand in them. The untaught and unstable will twist them to their own destruction, as they also do with the rest of the scriptures. So here, Peter actually says three very important things about Paul. Number one, Paul's writings are put on the same level as the other scriptures. 
meaning the Old Testament and the other books of the New Testament that existed at that time. That means Paul's writings, just as the rest of Scripture, is God's Word, inspired by God. Number two, some parts of Paul's writings are hard to understand. Remember, Paul was a highly educated Jew. He knew the Old Testament, the old writings, and he could clearly see how Jesus is the Messiah by looking at all the prophecies at the Old Testament. And what made him especially good is to understand how we are now under the new covenant and not under the old law anymore. We are now under the law of the Spirit and under Jesus. Jesus came to fulfill the Old Testament law. And he explained this in his letters. And for some, especially young Christians, this is very hard to understand. Number three, that the untaught and unstable will twist Paul's writings as they do with the other writings. Meaning that at that time, there were people who twisted Paul's writings. And there are still people who do it even today. False teachers, false prophets, and people who do not understand what Paul was actually saying because they're not spiritually mature enough. Or some are just, how can I say this? Hmm. Probably the exact way how Paul was before he became a Christian. Very legalistic and zealous for God but not having the Holy Spirit in him. His spiritual eyes was not open yet until Jesus appeared to him and opened his eyes. Now, you got to understand that Peter, the rock of the church, Peter was standing with Paul and his teachings. Jesus said that Peter would be the rock of the church. Jesus said in Matthew 16 verse 18, And I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. So Peter and the other apostles, they stood with Paul. They saw him as one of their own, that his writings were the same as the other scriptures, that he was a brother in Christ. Well, if you're still disagreeing with me, you don't disagree with me. That's what scripture says. That's what the Bible says. Peter himself says it. So if you still don't want to agree with Peter, it's probably your choice, but then you need to know that you're disagreeing with Jesus, with Peter and the rest of the apostles. But then you shouldn't call yourself a Christian because if you disagree with them, that means you disagree, disagree with the whole New Testament. So that means you're probably not a real Christian if you don't follow the New Testament. Look, when Jesus changes someone, He gives him His Spirit, He opens His spiritual eyes, he makes him a new creation, as he did me. I was a terrible sinner before I became a Christian. And so he did with Paul, who was a ruthless, legalistic, dangerous man. And he changed him and he gave him love, truth. This ruthless, dangerous man knew what love really is after. <laughs> after Jesus showed him the truth. Listen to what Paul said, 1 Corinthians 13, If I speak human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions, and if I give over my body in order to boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy, is not boastful, is not arrogant, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not irritable, and does not keep record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. You know, that is the one thing that you will see in a lot of legalistic Christians. They're so legalistic, so judgmental, with no love. And that is the problem. That is God's first command, the most important command. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, most people who do not want to accept the writings of Paul, they are those from the Hebrews Root Movement. Now they are Christians who believe that 
We are not free from the old law of sin and death anymore. We are still under the law. We are not under Christ, under the new covenant. And if that's you, you also believe that you need to be circumcised. You should not eat pork, shrimps, or lobsters. No shellfish. You should not cut your beard. You should not wear any clothing with mixed fabrics. That you should stone people to death if they disobeyed the law. Now I can go on and on here about the Old Testament that was meant for the people of Israel for that specific time. We are not under the old law of sin and death anymore. We are now under the new law of Jesus, the law that Jesus fulfilled. And of course, there are many things that are still the same. It is still a sin to murder someone, to steal, to lie, to envy, etc. Paul's letters are not against it. He doesn't say, oh, you can just go on and sin because now we're under Jesus. No, he is against sin because Jesus is still against sin. Paul agrees with everything that Jesus taught. Paul wrote in Romans 6 verse 14, For sin will not rule over you, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Absolutely not. Don't you know that if you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of that one you obey, either of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But thank God that although you used to be slaves of sin, you obeyed from the heart that pattern of teaching to which you were handed over. And having been set free from sin, you became enslaved to righteousness. You know, the Old Testament, if you want to follow the Old Testament and you, if you think you're still under the old law of sin and death, there's over 600 laws that you need to follow. We are not under the Old Testament law anymore. We are now under the law of Jesus, of, under the Spirit. And it's actually <laughs> more difficult than the Old Testament law. Because now it's not just about these outward things that you do. Everything you do should be done through faith, in faith. So that's not just your actions, what you do. It's also what's going on here in your head, your thoughts, your intentions. Paul wrote in Romans 14 verse 23, But whoever doubts stands condemned if he eats, because his eating is not from faith. And everything that is not from faith is sin. Paul's authority as an apostle is very clear in Scripture. We can trust it because it is God's Word. And we are not under the old law of sin and death anymore. We are now under the law of Jesus, under the Holy Spirit. And if you don't understand what this means, especially if you're still a young Christian, please watch these videos here. Both of them will help you. And before you go, always remember this. God loves you and I love you too. Take my life and let it be